Hi guys, it's Chloe Evans here from Clothes Craft Closet, stamping up demonstrator on the mid-north coast of New South Wales. And today is Thursday, which means it's time for another cuppa and card class. Um, so this week we will be creating this beautiful card, which is a case from the UK demo um, called Michelle Last. Her cards are absolutely amazing. And I saw her do a card similar to this one quite some time ago, and I've always wanted to recreate it. So this is my version. Um, so the girls who who um, would already have their kits who participate in the club um, you can look for the kit with the brick wall here we go this is the kit and it'll have the brick wall paper on it so that's our kit that you want to get out um, and so for anybody who's new and doesn't know what my cup and card class actually is I'll give you a quick rundown each month um, you purchase a stamp set um, and maybe embellishments or paper pan paper ribbon um, something like that and then I will send you out the card kit uh, for the five weeks that month for absolutely free. Um, so this month the girls um, needed to buy the Under, Under My Umbrella stamp set and the coordinating punch and then a pack of the Bright's DSP stacks which is the little six by six paper. Um, so once they purchased that at the beginning of the month I then sent out kits for every card and then today we're going to put them together. So let's get started. We'll move this out the way. Okay so in your kit for this class you should have now I have two of everything in my kit because you always want to have a spare oh no not that one here we go you should have a piece of cardstock that's already been embossed if I bring this up you can just see let me get my camera to focus on this it's a bit hard because it's it's a white piece of cardstock but you can just make out that that's partially embossed with our brick wall embossing fold which is one of my favorites so your card will already be embossed and scored and folded to the right measurements um, you will also have two pieces or oh, actually one piece of um, no two pieces I am right two pieces of whisper white card um, and you'll also have some beautiful little sequins. And now I do know that you already have these um, stamps. And so you can stamp and um, fussy cut them yourself. But I've already done mine just to save a little bit of time for everybody. Um, but these flowers come from our stamp set. So you just want a selection of these. I think I've got a couple. I've got another little pack couple more in there as well so I've got a couple of each of these that I've just stamped and cut out um, and we're just going to put the card together so let's move some of these bits so we don't lose them and we shall get stamping I'll put those back in there okay so we don't need to do much more with this at the moment we need to add a sentiment but we can wait till the end for that so I'm going to put that over out the way for a time being and we are just going to get stamping and punching with these so if I place the card back in view if I put it over here there you go up in the corner and then you can see what we're what we're doing okay so we need um, an umbrella handle and an actual umbrella base I don't know what the top of an umbrella is called is it the parasol maybe not sure okay so we are going to use this one here which is the closed umbrella um, parasol and then we're going to get our little handle out as well and that's all we need for those at the moment Okay, so I'm going to get my blocks and put those on there and another one on there. Okay, and we're going to use Memento because we're going to be colouring in with our blends to create this beautiful pattern. So we need to use Memento for that. If you don't have any alcohol ink pens, um, our stamping blends, and you only have maybe our, our stamping right markers, then you need to change out the Memento for maybe stays on instead because the water and the water won't work together where I've got alcohol and water so that's how we remember this one and all we're going to do is stamp our umbrella now whenever I stamp anything that needs a punch to coordinate I always look to see how the item gets punched out and then I try and work out the best way to then position this to fit in there the easiest so it's going that way this is the bit that we want here so I'm going to stamp our image that way as well stuck to the block there we go and then the same with our handle it's going this way so I'm going to turn this around and I'm going to stamp it that way as well just like that there you go okay <clears throat> while you've got the memento out 
on your other piece of scrap whisper white you can stamp your flowers um, and fussy cut those out so you're going to need about one two three four five six maybe seven flowers it's always probably best to do more than less and all we're going to do is punch these out now post-it note would be great for lining up if you're if you can't get your fingers in there and i'm just going to line that up punch that little one out okay and I'm going to put those bits in the bin. So there's our parasol. And then the same, I'm going to slide him down there. Oh, he's a bit long. I've had him too high up. Punched him too high up. Let's take a bit of this corner off. Okay, we'll try again. Slide him down there. Oh. Now, if you squeeze your punch just a little, it sort of grips it and gives you that chance to move a little bit better punch him out there he is and we'll get rid of these little scraps okay so they are our little two bits of punch out that we need so I'll get all the flowers that I've already stamped and cut oh, oh no I don't want the sequins just yet don't want those yet they can go back in there all right I'll push them over to one side I can't quite get them in Oh, look, there's loads of them. I dropped loads. Oh, no. All right. Move them all over there. We'll get those out in a minute. Okay. And so now what I'm going to do is start coloring these in. Now, you can obviously use any color that you want. Um, I'll tell you the colors that I've used in case you want to do the same as me. I'm throwing all my supplies everywhere today. Okay, so my umbrella parasol is in uh, Pool Party Light and Dark. Um, the flowers are a combination of Rococo Rose, light and dark, and Petal Pink, light and dark. And I have also done all the leaves in Old Olive. So those are the four sets of colour. Four sets? One, two, three. Yes, four sets of colour that I use to create this card. And so now we're just going to go about colouring this in. And I'm going to try and be as fast as possible for this. So let's get some scrap paper to put as a base. There we go. Here's a piece of scrap. Let's move this out of the way. Squeeze him in. Because the problem with when you're colouring with your blends, to get a really good blend, the colour's actually got to seep through. Um, and what we don't want happening is that if you don't have something absorbent underneath your um, colouring, what will happen is the, the colour will puddle, the ink will puddle, and then it will flood your image and spread everywhere. And we don't want that to happen. So let's get colouring. Now I'm going to try not to put my head in the screen so if I do I apologize in advance but I'm going to try my best not to um I like to start off with my dark first so I'm just going to run a dark outline down the lines here now I'm definitely not the best at coloring I'm very childlike and basic I just guess where I would think it would be dark so I'm guessing you know the darker color would be down the bottom here so I'm just going to add my dark in there and then I'm going to try and blend all of that out with the lighter shade. So I start over that dark bit first going out and then I sort of blend that bit out a little bit like so. And again with this one I'm going to do the same thing again. So I'm going to start layering out my ink on the bits that are already dark and coloured in and then I'm going to blend that out and across and I'm hoping that what will happen is if I blend over those darker bits I should get a bit of definition in the middle that's the plan all right so over the dark bits again up the side up the side oh, and then color 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 Okay, that's looking not bad. I think I want to add just a little bit more dark down here. So I'm just going to go back. And I'm just going to add a little bit more dark. And then again, blend that up there. Okay, that'll do. 
better do it. I sometimes think less is more. The more you play around with it, sometimes the worse it becomes. So that's our umbrella. And then now it's just a matter of colouring in some of these flowers. So I'm, again, basic, basic, basic. I've coloured in some just in the light, like that. And then I've coloured in one of the sides in the dark, like so. And then I've thrown in a bit of Rococo Rose. And that is literally how I went about it, just alternating the colours of the flowers between the four sort of colours, the four shades. So that one, I might add a dark one in. I might add a bit of dark in the middle there, maybe a bit of shadowing, like so. And then let's do the petal on here. And you guys will obviously be much more within the lines when you create this. I'm rushing a bit for you all. Okay, so we're going to do that one there. And then we'll do, let's do a dark one here. Like that. And then we'll add maybe a light one. And this one, I just love these little flowers. I love all these sort of bold line um, stamped images. They're so much fun to colour with. Um, I definitely love using these sort of really bold shades and things. All right. And again, you can make this any colour you want. There's nothing, it's, you've got no cardstock to coordinate with. Um You've it the you know the coloring that the color that's added is your choice. There's nothing you have to coordinate. So you can do the umbrella whatever color you want. You can do the flowers whatever color you want. It's really completely up to you. So just going around the outside to add a bit of definition. And let's do this one dark. As well, oh, I think that might be a flower in the background there. What do we think? Maybe let's do him. Let's do him really dark, like this color, and then maybe we'll do that really back one, a pale color. There we go. And then what I'll do is I'll go in at the end and do all the leaves um, last because they are just the same colour on all of them. So I'm going to, I can just go back through quickly and do all of those in no time at all. Like that, like that. Oh, okay. Oh, and here comes some more rain. Raining, raining. I hope it's nice wherever you guys are. It's very wet here in Port Macquarie at the moment. Add. Should we add a bit of definition? I've gone right out the lines on those ones. Look at that. Isn't that a bit annoying? Oh, well. You won't see much of it. It'll all be hidden. Okay, let's do dark or Rococo here. And let's do Rococo here. And see, the colours, I think, really pop once you add that. Um, old olive once you do those leaves it really just brings those colors together and um, makes them look let's do this color makes them look fantastic oh there's an ant on the lap okay here we go and oh we'll add a bit of definition there a bit around there okay so now that we've done with those colors we're going to just come back in with our green oh actually i might use the dark first okay so my idea i keep moving my paper the idea is that i'm just going to do the dark and i'm just going to sort of put a streak on them like that and then i'm going to come in and just color them out and that way i'm blending at the same time like so there's one We'll do the same again. Now, I'm not putting the lids on these because I'm going backwards and forwards so much with them. I'm just covering them with the lid. Oh, there's some there. Um, 
just so they don't dry out straight away. Um, but I'm not clicking them on and off because I've got to come backwards and forwards to them so many times that you end up with repetitive strain syndrome. So if you are just using them one after another like this pretty quickly, then just balance them with the lid on the side like that and then it will stop them from drying out a little bit. I mean, if you leave them all day, then obviously they will dry out. But just for now, because we keep using them. Okay, don't they look stunning with that old olive? It really, anyone who knows me well enough knows I hate old olive, but I have to admit it works beautifully with these colours, with these flowers. And so I'm not doing anything super amazing. There are some fantastic demos out there who do beautiful colouring. I am not one of them. I colour like my... Well, he's now eight, but my baby, the way he colours, that's how I colour. It's good enough for him. It's good enough for me. And that's it. That's that one done. And last but not least, this last little one here. Hopefully I've got enough of these. I have some more. I just don't want to colour it, spend any more time colouring them. Okay, that there, that there. Done. Ta-da! All right, remember to snap the lids on them. Make sure that they are nice and secure and they're not going to go anywhere. Okay, I will get rid of my scrap piece of paper for the time being and bring all this back together because now we're going to put our little, our little set together. Okay, so also in your kit will be a piece of linen thread. And all we're going to do with this now is literally stack them up. So I found the best thing to do is to add your umbrella. I'll bring this one back in again so you can see. Um, is to add your umbrella and then work out where you want to put your flowers afterwards. So foam mount and glue dots are how we're going to go about putting this, these beautiful flowers together. So I'm just going to do a foam mount on the back of that one there. And I want him kind of, I don't know, there like that that's it and then we're going to glue dot the handle now I found that these little glue dots these come from the stamping up kits when you buy one of the stamping up kits um, you get like a it has everything in it that you need so it always comes with foam mount stamping dimensionals and our beautiful glue dots and so I find these really handy when you're coming to add other things to them so all I've done is I've added a glue dot to it and then just put the umbrella like that but I just thought I need to put the flowers underneath it all right let's pull him off take the glue dot off we'll put the flowers in first that would make more sense all right so we're just going to do most of these flowers are going to be using glue dots so we're just going to put we want them to go along the edge. We're trying to hide the edge of our card so it has that sort of seamless, seamless flow. So another one there. And I'm also taking into account that's petal pink, so I want to put a Rococo rose next to it. So I'll do this one here like that. That goes beautifully up there. And then we just want a couple more down here. And then we should have one left over. And what we can do with that one, that one there. And, oh, look, that's perfect. That one can go on the end like that. There we go. So there's your edge. Look how quickly that came together. So pretty. So now what we'll do is we'll go back to adding in our um, umbrella handle. Oh, stuck to my nail now. So we'll just add that to the back. Squeeze him on. We're just going to poke him in there. Like so. There we go. And then this last flower, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to foam mount him up. So you can use your little um, stamping dimensionals, but I haven't got any on hand. So I'm just going to trim off that edge. I'm going to put that on the back there. 
And I'm just going to foam mount him up and I might add him, I don't know, about there maybe just to give a bit of depth to the card. And so with our ribbon, we are just going to make a bow. So I've done two bunny ears around the hole. Oh, sorry, around the tree, through the into the hole, she says, but I can't get, oh, there we go. And that's going to make our bow. I find the two bunny ears bow works better tying a bow the bows sort of sit better than when you do it the other way that might just be me though and I'm not sure that's even true but I think it works I'm just going to chop the chin off now on this card you can see I've got really long tails but I obviously didn't cut I didn't tie him as equal so I'm gonna have to trim him off and we're just going to use a glue dot again to add that bow to our umbrella and so all I do is I just sort of screw up or as I like to call it to my girls, they make them laugh. You make a bogey. You want to screw up your glue dot so it's like a screwed up little bogey. Put it on the knot and then you're just going to stick that on the handle like so. And that creates your bow. Ta-da! Pretty pretty. So all we're left now is with a sentiment. Now, a lot of you get scared about having to put the sentiment in last and not doing it straight away. And if you're concerned, you can always add the sentiment in before you do all the rest of the work. Or you could always do a sentiment on another piece of paper and punch it out and put it over the top if you're really concerned. But I'm a true believer of just having a go. Um, and definitely practice on a scrap piece first. A couple of scrap piece practices makes all the difference. So we are going to use the sentiment that says, I mean, you girls it, it can use anything, but I like the one here that says, no matter the weather, we're friends forever. And I think that's a really good one. So I'm going to use my grid here, not only as my scrap to stamp off, but also to line up my block on the grid. And then I'm going to try not to get my head in the way while I do this. Um, I then use the block. I see through the block here and I can line up my words like that. There we go. And that should give you a relatively straight stamp. Let's have a look. Beautiful. So like I said, always have a couple of stamps first and then just go straight up. Oh. See how that one's really gluggy? I almost put that on the card. Let's see what it would have looked like. Yeah, see, lucky I double checked. All right, let's give it a clean off. Let's get the scrub out, stamping scrub. And we will, he's probably, oh, I don't know if I've got any mist left. Oh, no, none in there. All right, let's see. It's pretty damp anyway. So we're gonna give him a clean. Clean off that horrible gunky bit that we had. I'm going to try again. All right. So stamp, 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 stamp. All right. Stamp, 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 stamp. And we're going to put this on here like so. Ta da! There we go. Fantastic. Awesome. Great job. And so now it's just a matter of adding our little bits of Tombow and some sequins. Um, we're using the woven thread. Oh, I've got some in here, haven't I? I don't need to get some out. I'd already packed some in my kit. Um, and I find just a few little gentle dollops of, oh, it's got a sticky end, a few little dollops of Tombow. You don't have to squeeze very hard because you only want a little, a little bit. And I'm just going to put a couple there, a couple up there, and then we'll put maybe one down here. Okay, and then in your little pack, you can just add some of the sequins that I've provided for you. Oh, can't get him. There's another one there. Add that one in, and then another little one here. Let's add that one in as well. And I feel like he needs another red one, so I'm just going to put a bit of glue there. Come on, Tombow. I don't want to squeeze too hard because then you end up with a Tombow accident. There we go. And let's get one of these. That little pink one's nice. Oh, have I got him? Yes, I have. I'm just going to poke that there, like that. And there you go. There's your card put together from your kit. 
Okay, girls, well, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I will be another video. I'll be back next Thursday for another video for another card. Um, for those of you who might like to take part in my cup and card classes, um, check out my blog at Clothes Craft Closet. There'll be a link below. Um, and have a look. You can go over to the page and see when sign up is for the next month. Um, the next one will be for July. So sign up will be sometime around the end of June. And hopefully it'll be something Something exciting and new from the new annual catalogue um, and I'll have all the details on what products you need to purchase to take part in the class thank you for joining me today I hope you have a lovely day and you get lots of inky crafty gluey fingers going today take care bye bye